Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode that is actually kind of a continuation from last week. So last week's episode was called, What is the Mother Wound? Uh, Someone had written in a question to me about the mother wound. And so I basically covered what that is in last week's episode. So if you haven't listened to that, or if you haven't watched that, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do that first, because what I'm doing this week is I'm moving into steps that you can take to start healing this problem, this mother wound. So if you haven't done that, do that now. And if you have, let's move into what you can do. The first thing, if you know that you've had this painful experience with your mother, if you've been let down, neglected, judged, uh, criticized, humiliated, all of the things that people have written in saying that they have had happened to them from their mother wound, then the number first thing that you must do is you must basically admit that it's true, that you are disappointed and that in, in many cases were emotionally, psychologically, verbally abused, physically abused by your mother which is a bitter pill to swallow, especially because of the society that we come from. There is so much um, mother aggrandizing and adoration and putting moms, especially in the US culture, up on pedestals as if they're perfect humans. And the reality is that we're just people, right? If you're a mom, you're just a person, your mother was just a person. And this is not to say that what you experienced isn't terribly painful because it definitely is, but we just have to admit that that's what you're dealing with. Because how can we possibly change anything that we're in denial of? You've got to stop making yourself wrong, stop saying you're too sensitive and that's what it's all about. Listen, if you listened to last week's episode or watched it, you know if you have a mother wound or not. And so the first part of healing is admitting that this is what is true. So the second step in this process is basically questioning this whole mother perfection archetype, right? That's not real. And there are many cultures, not just the US culture, that looks at women and judges them if they are not all giving, all sacrificing, all never having a problem themselves. They live for their children, they live for their spouse, whatever that is. That isn't real. So we have to accept the humanness in our mothers. And I'm not saying uh, that makes it okay, especially if you had a narcissistic mother or an abusive mother, I'm not saying that's okay. But there's a reality that mothers are just people and that we're all flawed to one degree or another. So moving into accepting the humanness, the messiness of raising humans, of doing the best you can, which may not be good enough, right? Which may leave this wound. But part of accepting the humanness is accepting it in our parents and accepting it in ourselves. Not expecting that we should be any kind of a perfect parent, but a loving parent, yes, most definitely. I think that we're all fed this inaccurate information about what a good mother is. And I don't think that those exist, that perfect mother archetype. Good enough mothering, which is a psychological concept, really means that if you, as long as you love a child, it isn't about perfection. It really is about love. If you have a mother wound, so much of the time we're talking about a mother who wouldn't or couldn't love you. So that's different than simply being an imperfect mother. But we need to, for our own sake, especially if we plan on having kids or if you already have kids, we have to accept the humanness in this process, accept responsibility for the mistakes that we make, make amends, say that we're sorry. Moving into number three, there's a process of mourning the dream of the mother you'd hoped for or perhaps mourning the dream of maybe your friend had a mom who was kind, who was gentle, 
who really impacted you in your life and you really wished that her mother or his mother were yours, right? So how do we mourn the dream? You have to write, journal the way you wished it was. Be honest about how it was, how it impacted you, how hard it was, how much you were covering up for the way that your mother treated you. There are so many aspects of having an unloving mother that profoundly impact us as children. So by writing it out, by mourning that dream and by getting really specific about how you wished it was, and then eventually I would ask you to have one um, compassionate friend or someone that you trust who won't give you any input, who just will witness what you wrote. And then I would suggest and encourage you to do a burning ritual to burn what you wrote allowing it to leave your experience, just honoring it. So this is not a magic pill. I, those of you who know my work know that I like rituals because I feel like they're very solid, right? When we can take an action, we're moving something energetically. And again, it isn't a perfect, you know, there, there's no magic pill to fix this, but there is something about being specific about how the way your mother was, how that impacted you in your life, how sad, how pissed, how enraged all of your feelings that you weren't allowed to have as a child, being able to write them out and then have um, a caring other, we would call it, or like a compassionate witness, witness you can be incredibly, incredibly healing. You know, the child within us, we really want a do-over, right? We really want it to be different. We really want to think that if we had just been better, if we're just better now, that that will somehow change what a mother who is incapable or unwilling to be loving, that somehow that will change it. But we don't have the power to change someone else and we don't have the right, right? Your mother's trip is her trip, but you're a grown up at this point. So now we're talking about you. How can you heal from this? What can you do to basically give yourself the love that you didn't get from her? And one thing is giving up the fantasy that your mother will change. Because if she's proven herself to be untrustworthy, if she hurts you continually still, if she goes out of her way to embarrass or humiliate you, I've had so many clients with this scenario telling me different stories of how their mother would almost be gleeful to tell these embarrassing, terrible stories about them as children to their friends, to their boyfriends, to their husbands. Just awful. So that is on your mother, right? What you do now, what you choose to do to change, that is on you. So part of this process is what we're trying to do is release some of that shame and guilt. It isn't logical. So there's a part of our young minds, if we're children of an unloving mother, that we think, well, if my own mother doesn't love me, then how am I lovable? But if you've grown up to have children of your own, then you know that that is not true. That's a child's logic that thinks it must be me because it would be way too threatening at the age of eight or 10 or even 12 to actually put it on the parent because we need them so much. It isn't like you're moving out and getting your own apartment at 12, right? So we still have to be in this space where they are dealing. Now, as a child, you, you keep going, you know, keep banging your head up against that wall, seeking that maternal love that if, you, if it hasn't happened, it's most likely never happening, right? I mean, that's the reality. But then we go on into our lives and we recreate these unhealthy relationships where we find ourselves in relationships with friends where we're seeking their approval and they give it or they withhold it. We may find ourselves drawn to romantic relationships or friendships or bosses of people who were incredibly critical the same way that your mother might have been. So I call these repeating realities. 
and we have to really look at what they are and understand what unconscious material might be driving us to continue getting into these types of relationships. So that was kind of number three, but let's move into number four, which is the three cues. And if you know my work, you know that I talk about this, which are the three questions that you can ask yourself to gain clarity about what relationship you might be repeating. So if you had this, uh, had an unloving mother, let's say, start asking yourself the three questions, which I'll give you, and all of this will be in your little downloadable cheat sheet, so don't worry about it. All you need to do is just, at the end of this, you'll see where there's a link to it. That the first question is, so bring to mind a friend who the friendship causes you pain, right? It's they're approving of you, they're rejecting you, they think you're amazing, they're uplifting you, and then they're scratching you down. That is a friendship that could be mirroring this mother relationship. So the first question is, who does this person remind me of? When they're being judgmental towards me, who do they remind me of? The second question is, where have I felt like this before? And the third question is, why is this behavioral dynamic? So let's say the dynamic may be that you're trying to get this person's approval and they will sometimes give it and sometimes withhold it. That dynamic of you seeking, of you longing for something from them that they don't readily give you, that dynamic is what we're talking about. So the third question is why is this behavioral dynamic or this interaction, the dance that I'm doing with this friend, why is that familiar to me? How is that familiar to me? And you may actually take on the role of the disapproving or rejecting mother. So when we um, have a transference, that's the psychological term for it, and I call it a repeating relationship reality, you, you don't always have to be the role that you were growing up. Sometimes you're identified with the aggressor, is what we would call it, rather than being identified with the victim. So you may ask those questions about a friendship where you are very judgmental of that person. You are approving or disapproving of that person. And in that, the answer to that question is, why is it familiar to me? is because this is what your mother did to you and now this is what you're doing to someone else or what you are engaging and allowing someone else to do to you. There's like um, another question or scenario um, that sometimes if the three questions that I just gave you to understand repeating relationship realities doesn't reveal anything for you, another way of asking it that sometimes will produce more results is when I'm in this interaction in a relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship that I'm seeking for them to think I'm good enough, but they're rejecting me, or a friendship, who do I become? And who do they become when we're in the middle of that dance? And you may become your 10 year old self and your friend or your lover may become your mother or you may be doing it to them. So you may become the punitive or rejecting parent and they may become your 10 year old or five year old self. So that may sound confusing. I think if you're reading it on the blog, if you, if you actually read it and you read it in the cheat sheet, it's a lot more clear. But the point is we do repeat these relationship realities unless there's some kind of intervention, unless we take this unconscious material Right? It might be subconscious because you kind of know it, but it's all the way down in the bottom of the basement, like you haven't looked at it in a long time, or you know it, but you didn't know what to do with it. You might have known that there's something wrong with your relationship with your mother all of your life, but you may, might not have known that it is called having the mother wound. Right? You might not have known that there is something that you can do to get on the path of your own healing now that you're an adult. An unloving or rejecting mother has already taken enough from you. Isn't it time that you start running the show of your own internal and external life around this? And that means getting committed to your own healing. The fourth idea that I have for you is to become the good mother to yourself 
and to your children that you might not have had. So that means that if you have internalized your mother's punitive language and punitive mean treatment of you, if you have a very harsh internal critic, that really isn't you. That is you having internalized the voice of your mother. And isn't it time to evict that voice from your head? I'm going to say, indeed it is. You can become the good mother to yourself by treating yourself with the same compassion that you would a child, a child that you adored. It's incredibly healing when you become a mother yourself to stop this cycle, to understand what happened in your own childhood so that you don't treat your children the way that your mother treated you. And protect your children. If you have a rejecting, narcissistic, mean, cluster B, we could call them, of the personality disorders, mother, protect your children from her. She doesn't have a right to do to your kids as a grandmother what she did to you because ultimately she'll turn everyone against you or at least try. And she'll turn against them too, of course, sooner or later, as soon as they're not malleable and easy to manipulate. So become the good mother to yourself. Become the good mother to your children. Um, number six is find a good and kind mentor, right? This can be a corrective emotional experience. Be drawn to the work of people who are loving. Be drawn to women. Perhaps if you're a woman and you have this mother wound, you can find, and maybe you already have naturally. I find that many of my clients will find themselves drawn to um, either the, the negative repetition is the repeating relationship reality of being drawn to the punitive mother, sort of looking for another outcome unconsciously, but with no intervention, there most likely won't be another outcome. But naturally, many of us are so adaptive that you might be drawn to women who are kind, who think you're amazing, who are verbally affectionate with you, who are supportive. So look for that in your life and then follow people, people's work who are that way. I can be the representation of a good mother for you. I have excess love to give, right? So even if you're just looking at the work that I'm doing and seeing that I see you, that you are lovable right this moment, there is nothing wrong with you and you did not deserve that shit. You didn't. And it's time that you take a hold of it and stop doing it to yourself. Because e even once we're grown up, if your mother is still alive, you might still be doing this painful, unsatisfying dance of not having good boundaries with her and all of that. It's time for it to stop. You deserve to be loved by yourself and by others. And this is on you to get yourself to that point of knowing that that's true. All right. And then the last, which might be the most obvious step that I would think might be super helpful if you really do have a mother wound, is get yourself into therapy and make sure that you are not in a repeating reality with a punitive therapist, because that can happen as well. Be honest about why you're going to therapy. I have a mother wound. I had a narcissistic or, or a mean or a rejecting mother. And I'm looking for a different experience with someone who is open and caring and vocal and verbal. And you can say what you're looking for. And listen, you're not looking for the therapist to become your mother, but you certainly are not looking for her to become your bad mother, right? We don't want that. And sometimes we can be unconsciously drawn to even doctors or um, other people in our life who treat us badly because predators can really sense this familiarity in someone who's been victimized. So we don't want that and you certainly don't want that in a therapeutic relationship. So I know this is a lot. I want you to know that you can heal and that you deserve the love that you are seeking. 
You can get it in friendships. You can give it to yourself. But this healing process all starts with admitting that this is what you experienced. So I hope that this added value to your life, you know that I am cheering you on like a wild maniac because I know that you can do this. This pivot, this experience, undertaking healing the mother wound can change your entire life and all of your relationships for the better. And I want that so much for you. So if this episode, if you liked it, if you feel like it helped you, if you know other people who could use it, please share it on your social media platforms. If you have not, please go to iTunes. And if you love the show and you're a big fan, please leave a positive uh, review. I would love that. I would so appreciate that because that's how we get the word out so that I can reach as many people as possible with my message of empowerment because you guys are it for me, as you know. So I just want to say thank you for watching, for listening, for reading, and for sharing. I hope you have an amazing week diving deep into your healing. And as always, take care of you.